All right, good morning, everyone, uh, and welcome to the Southwestern District Marketing and PR class. Um, we're going to kick this off. This is going to be a little bit different session. If you've joined us in sessions in the past, in that we're going to have three presenters this morning, uh, and we will go through those individually. Uh, but those presenters are Rocky Willett, Dominic Martin, and excuse me, Johnny Martin and Dominic Finetti. And each one of them will have about 15 minutes of material. And then at the end, we'll have about a 15 minute Q&A session. On the bottom of your screen, if you are, are on, uh, on video, you'll notice a chat button down there and you may have had a chat window pop up. And if you have a question as we go through the material, um, please enter your question into the chat. Everybody is going to be on mute to avoid us having some background noise. Uh, to, to disrupt the presentation. So everybody be, except the presenter will be on mute. But if you have a question, feel free to pop into the group chat and ask your question. If I can answer it directly, I'll answer it straight away. But if not, um, then I'll go on ahead and queue those up. And when we get to the Q&A session, we'll answer those questions from uh, each of the presenters. So with that, let's get started. We're going to kick this off with Rocky Willett. Rocky is the um, uh, Director of Marketing and PR for the Southwestern District. He's a 28-year member of the Barbershop Harmony Society. Sings with the vocal majority, and his quartet, uh, Sentimental Journey, is now in their 25th year. Rocky's background in public relations comes from his experience as an Air Force P, uh, public affairs officer, where he was the chief of public affairs division at Laughlin Air Force Base in Del Rio. He was on the Southwestern Board of Directors from 2013 to 2015, and has now rejoined the team for 2018 and 2019. So to kick this session off, I'm going to turn it over to Rocky Willett. Good morning, Rocky. Good morning, Scott, and good morning, everyone who's joined. Uh, I'm going to try not to put on my, my broadcasting voice here because only people like Steve Stripling uh, who can do it naturally. Nick Alexander can do that, so I'll just try to speak naturally. But uh, without any further ado, I am going to figure out how to share my screen, which is down here at the bottom, and I'm going to jump right into my presentation, uh, which is here. Share. And I'll start the show. Start the show. There it is. Okay. So let's talk about marketing in the Southwestern District and how you can help us to help you. Now, the society vision is everyone in harmony. They mean that everyone, uh, harmony is a gift that we must share with old and young neighbors and strangers, and everybody in between, every color, every background, because the world needs what we have. So we, at the district level, must build a revitalized suite of products and services that allow local chapters to grow and thrive so that our hobby can be a force for direct impact on society. So, here is our job, marketing and PR's job, okay? We are here to help our chapters tell everybody who we are, what we do and why, why people should join us, and we have many tools available to accomplish this. First off, there's, there's testimony, just uh, like an elevator pitch, you know, a 60 second spiel about what your chapter does and what you're up to now. Uh, just talking to friends and family of, about what you do, you know, they say, where do you go every Tuesday night, Thursday night, Monday night, whatever. Uh, talking to your colleagues and even strangers. They see a shirt you're wearing or something. And, and uh, like the shirt with the color or the picture of the pitch pipe on there. Some people have asked me, what is that? You know, so I could say it, that's one of the tools we have. Another one, of course, is print, where we have brochures, business cards, and flyers and posters. And we have digital material here, which is really coming to its place in about the last 10, 12 years, okay? That's social media, text messages, websites. And another tool we have, of course, is by demonstration, where we have performances, singing tags, and other community projects you might have ongoing. So here's the plan. Uh, in our view, what we have here in the district is two audiences. And what we want to make is the uh, Southwestern District homepage as the information central for those two audiences, okay? And our two audiences are the internal audiences. One of those is to, or, or you can think of this as inner chapter. And this is we, where we want you to tell the entire Southwestern District 
what you're doing and also a place for you to be able to find out what the other guys are up to. And the other audience is the external audience. We have friends, we got family, we got media, sponsors, or folks that are just curious about us. All of these folks are potential patrons, or friends, and supporters. So here's how you can help us. Through chapter involvement, just tell us what you're doing. Tell us about your shows, both pre and post show, and maybe even what happened backstage during the show, okay? Tell us about your guest nights, how many people showed up, who it was that showed up, where'd they come from? You got any community projects ongoing or any, any other kind of project, you know, let us know what's happening. Tell us stories about your members and their friends and family. And while you're at this, be sure that you give us photos or maybe just an audio clip, you know. We can always provide still pictures to go along with an audio clip. And of course, video. It seems like nowadays more people like to watch a short video than to read a long paragraph about stuff. And then any articles, you know, just uh, written articles, anything that'll help to tell the story. All righty. So this is how you help us. And now here is how we in the Southwestern District are going to help you. First off, we can provide you training on how to write a feature article how to take photos and video, who to contact in your community and how, how to use your website or your social media, and we provide also a distribution channel. Broadcasting your chapter news to the district, to the, to the uh, BHS HQ and the public so that we can lead, and there's our public right there, the friends, the family, all those people I mentioned earlier, so what we're trying to do here is lead people to your chapter. So why are we doing all of this? Well, the goal, once again, as I said, is to share our hobby, share the gift of harmony, so that we can be a force for direct impact on society. And with that, keep the whole world singing. And I'm not sure that was an, that was an entire 50 minutes, 15 minutes, actually it wasn't 50, geez. But uh, that's my introductory segment here. And as long as we're talking about what tools we're going to use, let me introduce you to uh, one of the guys that uh, has our main tool, and that would be Johnny Martin. Johnny Martin is the Southwestern District Webmaster. He's been a member of the BHS and the East Texas Men in Harmony chapter for like four years. He served on his chapter's board since 2014 and is their incoming VP of marketing and PR for next year. He's got over 18 years of experience in the web industry and now serves as, as I said, the Southwestern District Webmaster. So Johnny, what have you got to share with us? Thanks Rocky. Um, today we're going to talk about your website. I have a presentation here. Help us help you with your website. I have to share that. Let's do this one. All right. Um, your website is yeah, a little bit about me. Your website is basically your portal to your course from the public. Uh, it's very important to get your content up there. It'll help you drive traffic to and from your social media. Um, and we're going to kind of get into that. Um, I, my name is Johnny Martin. Again, as Rocky was saying, I am the, um, I've been in the BHS and East Texas chapter for four years. Um, I'm the Southwestern District Webmaster. Um, I'm the incoming VP of Marketing PR for our chapter next year. Um, I've been a developer since 2001. I don't look that old. I started when I was 13. And I'm also the Web Development Director for an East Texas marketing agency. Um, your website is your primary source of information um, to push out to the public. It's, it's really important to have uh, somewhere that you can distribute your, your events, your meetings, your news, maybe even a little bit about your, your board members. 
Um, so we're gonna kind of go step by step of those different types of, con of content. Uh, a really good tool to think about what kind of content you need is to think about your, your demographic. Who is coming to your website? Um, definitely fans. Anybody that you that have seen you in public, um, they want to find out more information about you. So you kind of gear your content to the people that want more. Um, you want to gear your content to potential new members. So uh, I know when I joined the East Texas Men in Harmony, uh, I was Googling, you know, I want to learn to sing better. I had no idea what barbershop was. I kind of have seen it in movies, uh, but I knew I wanted to join some sort of choral uh, community, and I found the East Texas Men in Harmony website, and it was really informative and instructive on what they do. And I showed up one day, and I loved it. It was fantastic. Um, another thing to gear your content to is the news media. Um, anytime we have a show, we broadcast to all the local news stations and newspapers around our area. And our website is the place that they can find information about us, about our board, um, and maybe some um, things like our logos, you know, a media kit for them to help with their uh, presentations to their uh, viewership. Um, Websites are a good place for other chapters or other barber shoppers to find out about you. If you are or another barber shopper is visiting your area and they want to say, you know, I don't have anything to do that Thursday night, I'm going to check out the local chapter. Um, and then, kind of the whole point of this Help Us Help You uh, program is that we, the district, need to know about your information about your chapter as you publish. Uh, what you're doing, we want to help you broadcast that. So it's really important that we kind of know what's going on as well. All right, we're going to step into a little bit about what kind of information do you post on your site. Uh, the main key item is who are you? What are you about? Um, you know, one cool thing about the East Texas chapter is they really, they had a really good message that I really liked and kind of their goals and what they were there for. Uh, one of them was giving back to the community, being pretty community oriented. This is a good place for you to just tell people what you're about. Um, and probably a higher priority is where do you meet? If someone wants to check you out, how do they find you? Uh, and what time? So it's a really important to have something very predominant on your site saying, you know, we meet at this place at this time every Thursday, rain or shine, just come and check us out. The other primary item on your website is the calendar. It's not just about shows, but it can be about any of your special chapter events. Maybe you want to say that you're all going to go and uh, sing for a local nursing home. And you kind of want, you know, if people want to come and check it out, they can do so. Um, and maybe you want to broadcast your chapter meetings. So this is, again, you can put all your chapter meetings on your calendar so, so people know. They can't follow every Thursday. They will see an item in your calendar. Every Thursday, you meet this place this time. Chapter news. Any big milestones in your chapter? So you're going to district. You broadcast that. It may be an event. It may just be a news item for you. Uh, but you're going to the district convention. This is what you're doing. And it's sort of a PR if you can send out to people. Maybe you can even share it with your local news of, you know, local um, choral chapter is going and, and uh, competing at a district level. A uh, really cool place to put that type of information that can pique people's interest. And another piece that you can pass along on social media, which Dom will be covering in the next segment. Um, a big primary um, segment of the site is going to be how do people get in contact with you? Maybe they want to request information. Maybe it's the news media saying, hey, we want you guys to do a segment on our uh, morning news show. We've had that happen quite a few times. Um, a good place also to allow people to book an event. Um, we get people hitting our site for, you know, they have their, their grandfather's birthday and they want a, the chorus or a quartet to come out and sing for them. Um, and that's a, that's a really good place for them to do that. Another thing is, you know, like in my case, I had no idea what barbershop was. Um, it's a good place to put in, you know, what exactly is it? Why is it different? It's not your normal acapella group. And uh, it's, a, it's a really cool piece of information to tell people why this is different. Uh, your quartets and ensembles need a place to 
place called home. Maybe you, you show all of your quartets that may be up for hire, or you just want to showcase uh, your different quartets and their accomplishments. Another thing you can do is if the quartets have their own Facebook pages or websites, you can link back to that. A good thing to do is linking between you know, the quartets or any other affiliated organizations um, so that you can sort of share traffic between the two. If your um, website platform can handle it, um, CDs and merchandise are always a good thing to sell. You know, get, make the chapter some money. Um, and then again, you know, with show tickets, um, you, there's different platforms out there. and We can go over those types of things in another um, webinar. But broadcasting where people can buy the tickets to your shows, that will get butts in the seats and make the chapter some money. Keeping your content updated. So, you know, we can we make all these segments, and I've been in the web industry a long time, and this is the hardest part of having a website. And that is, you know, once you make it, it's there, you're happy with it, but then no one ever touches it ever again, or very rarely. And it becomes sort of, I mean, the about section's not gonna change too much, but as far as ongoing information about your events, um, it, it, if they're not updated, your website sort of, it's, it's old and it, it doesn't, it's not very helpful to the public. So it's very important to find someone in your chapter that is willing to stay on top of this. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about website providers. If you do not already have a website and you need, you know, where do I start? What do I start with? Um, I kind of have highlighted a few major ones that I've seen uh, chapters use. Groupanizer is a really cool piece of software. It lets you not only do the front end of your website, but it also gives you a back end to have your membership log in. It'll manage your music. It'll manage your maybe internal blog and announcements and your internal calendar. Really cool. Squarespace is a site builder out there. Um, it, it basically lets you, a non-tech savvy person, go in and actually build a complete website. It's pretty cool. WordPress is kind of the same thing, though it's pretty blog related. Um, Wix is also like Squarespace, it's sort of a site builder. And there's, there's a ton of these things out there. Uh, but feel free to ask me any questions about, you know, where do I start or how do I accomplish these types of things. Um, I'll, I'll try to kind of point you in the right direction. And the main thing is, you know, publish, publish your content. Um, once it's on there, you know, build it and they will come is, is a fallacy. You, you need to actually let people know, hey, I put information on my site. You need to disseminate that between, you know, either your friends and family or your church groups, but also your social media and even fellow barbershoppers. Again, other barbershoppers may be interested in your event. Maybe they're pretty close to you and they want to come check out your next show. Um, you never know, so just get that content out there. Uh, and that kind of bleeds into the next segment, and I'm going to introduce Dom, uh, who has close to 10 years of social media experience, and he's completed in some pretty nice um, international top 15 courses, uh, and that's, that's pretty cool. And I'm going to um, share, and Dom, you should be able to take it away. Cool, thank you. Um, I appreciate you not um, going through my entire intro that way I don't have to skip past my intro <laughs> awkwardly <laughs> uh, so yeah let me just get this scared over here I was actually doing one last final change to my presentation because you know uh, I might be knowledgeable but I definitely am not uh, a planner <laughs> so uh, one second let me see share my screen all right, can you guys see it? Just give see me a nod. All right, cool. All right, uh, let me just go ahead and do a slideshow. All right. So yes, my name is Dominic. Thank you uh, for, for the quick intro there. <laughs> um, uh, this, my presentation is help us help you with your social media. Um, so you know, to get right to it, uh, kind of going back to what I. Uh, Kind of my background in social media. I have close to 10 years of experience uh, in social media marketing and online community management. Um, so I, I do this for a living. Uh, I received a BA in music industry uh, with a concentration in social media and live events uh, back in 2015. 
Uh, I've competed with three top 15 courses at BHS International, most recently with Space City Sound uh, this past uh, summer, uh, which we were ecstatic about. And, um, and I've also competed with like THX in 2014 and Voices in Harmony in 2012. Uh, I've helped manage uh, social media for notable names like Cole Kitts Miller, his, uh, his learning track and arrangement business. I helped with that. Uh, and the top 10 quartet, Rooftop Records, just to give him a few. And I currently serve as a social media manager for SWD, as well as Space City Sound, uh, the Houston Metro chapter. So, um, what can you do with social media, right? And so I think there's probably a lot of preconceived notions about uh, how social media works and kind of what it does for you. And I think, uh, unfortunately, we don't always have the resources or uh, people that have the knowledge to kind of tell you what it can be used for beyond uh, the basics. But... Uh, the general consensus is that uh, you can share personal information, uh, you can build and strengthen your relationships online, you can source news and relevant content, and you can create community around organizations, brands, and common interests. So if we, uh, if we keep that uh, in mind, you know, that can help guide us for how you, know, you can use social media to benefit your chapter. Uh, one second. There you go. Uh, so which social media sites are best for your course and why? Because there's tons of them out there and they seem to be uh, a new one every day. Uh, and so obviously to start, you've got uh, Facebook and um, then you've got uh, Instagram and you've got Twitter and you've got uh, Meetup. And so these are kind of the four that I think are the most beneficial for what you guys are probably looking to do. There are some more out there, but I, I think starting with, with any of these four, um, if you can do all of them, that's awesome. Uh, then I think you're gonna be off to a really good start. So uh, just so you guys know, I did a little bit of research, and as of 2018, 68% of US adults are now on Facebook, or Facebook users. Um, and so if that isn't reason enough to uh, be making a Facebook account for your course, I don't know what is. Uh, because that's obviously a huge source of potential uh, members, uh, you know, ticket sales, uh, you know, potential audience members, um, just you know, general notoriety. You know, a huge opportunity there for Facebook, and um, and then for seventy one percent of all, uh, excuse me, seventy one percent of all uh, eighteen twenty four year olds are Instagram users. So if you're trying to get more young people to join your chorus. Maybe, uh, uh, you know, and, and maybe more people that can help you with stuff like this. Um, getting an Instagram account is great because that's where you're going to reach them. Uh, and about 45% of the same group, the same age group, are on Twitter. Um, so, you know, those are kind of the, 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 the macro reasons as to why you should look at those platforms. Uh, but to kind of go into a little bit deeper, um, for Facebook, you know, the, the kinds of things you can do with it are obviously personal pages, business pages, event pages. Uh, and they're in their community groups and they're all in one place. So uh, you have a lot of opportunity to share, uh, you know, to, 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 to different walks of life uh, on Facebook as opposed to just it being, you know, made for one thing. Uh, you have uh, a great opportunity to tag members uh, and, uh, excuse me, I'm moving something here. One second, I'm going to move uh, a monitor just so I can, I can read what I'm saying. One second. Um, you have a great opportunity to uh, tag your members and have content be seen by their friends and family um, because, you know, we're not just thinking about, you know, who might join your course. We're also thinking about who they know and how it can benefit, um, you know, uh, the, 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 the success of your course from a financial perspective too. So uh, if you are, excuse me, if you are uh, on Facebook, you have an opportunity to post photos, for instance, of your uh, chorus members and um, sorry about that a little technical issue um, if, if an opportunity to post uh, photos of your chorus members and tag them um, so that their friends and family could see it and uh, potentially um, you know uh, just get the word out about uh, about your chorus you know to people that maybe normally wouldn't see it um, you also if you don't have the opportunity to make a website um, <clears throat> per uh, Johnny's advice uh, Social media is a great way to potentially invest in a free website. So Facebook is a great opportunity uh, to have a website, at least a makeshift one, until you're ready to, to, to have an official one you know, online. Um, and of course, you just have the most social platforms. If you have the budget, you also can run ads. So uh, Space City Sound does that. <clears throat> we don't have a lot of money, but we have a, a little bit, and so we try to uh, portion some of our budget uh, towards ads uh, as well when we have shows or guest nights, that kind of stuff. Um, for Instagram, uh, it's very image and video driven, uh, and you can link all of that content you're sharing on Instagram to your 
uh, Facebook. So uh, we do that in Space and Sound. So if you post a video clip, you can automatically share that to Facebook. And so then you're kind of uh, killing two, two birds with one stone, so to speak. Um, and you know, using Instagram, Instagram as your video tool, but then using Facebook to get the word out about that content as well. Um, if you're not a professional uh, photographer or video editor, it's not a big deal because Instagram offers a suite of high-end editing tools to make your content uh, look more professional, take it to the next level. Uh, and of course, um, and if you don't know uh, about uh, hashtags and, and handle tags, uh, those are a great uh, way to get your content seen uh, by the masses. And so I could go on forever about that, but the general uh, quick summary is that you can use uh, kind of the, 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 the numerical sign and a word, uh, for instance, hashtag barbershop music or hashtag barbershop chorus. And if you add that to your content on Instagram, your post will show up in, you know, any post that's ever, or in a feed of any post ever used that hashtag before. And so being able to use those uh, to your advantage uh, are a huge benefit. And then of course, tagging, um, you know, well-known names, like if you're trying to get the word out about content, maybe tagging SWD would be great because an SWD could share your content on their channel uh, as well. Um, and then of course, Instagram has ads um, uh, additionally uh, too. Uh, and then for Twitter, um, basically, uh, you know, I think that depending on, on your usage, you know, I, I don't necessarily need a Twitter, but I think it's always good to keep it in mind. It's mainly used for delivering uh, short and concise uh, news or messages. Uh, you can also start a public conversation with multiple users or direct message them privately. So I, I, for me, it's, it's doubles as a, as a, it's a news platform, but it's also a, a communication platform. <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, and you can amplify your content through hashtags and handles tags, just like with Instagram. Uh, and you can actually one thing that's not used a lot, but I love using is you can create pr uh, public and private lists, as they call them, uh, to tailor content to specific audiences. And what that is is if you go to your Twitter account and uh, on the home page of any page uh, or of any, of any account, you'll see a, a tab that says lists. If you click on that, you can create lists of, uh, of users. Uh, for different categories. So if you're trying to get more candidates to uh, potentially want to join the chorus, you could create a, uh, you could, every time you get a new follower, you could add them to a list if they are a singer or if they're a musician, and you, the list could be called, you know, um, potential guests, you know, and anytime, uh, you know, you're looking to invite them to more guest nights or just a weekly rehearsal, you could send out a note to everybody on this list. And so, um, I know a lot of people don't use that feature in Twitter, but I think it's super beneficial. And so if you're looking into making a Twitter account, definitely uh, consider using lists as well. And then once again, uh, Twitter is another platform that allows you to run ads. Uh, and then the last of these four is Meetup. And if you don't use Meetup yet, I highly recommend it. It was a huge game changer for Space City Sound. It's essentially a platform built all around hosting events and, um, and kind of uh, creating discussion boards around uh, these events. And so, um, you know, when, as soon as we, uh, I think the very first week that Space City Sound made a meetup page, um, we we got at least one or two. I think we had three people that added us, uh, joined our meetup, and I think one of those guys showed up uh, that very week. Uh, so it's a huge, uh, uh, hugely powerful tool, uh, mainly because uh, it basically does a lot of the work for you. Once you've set it up, uh, anyone that searches for, you know, music event in Houston or singing event in Houston, you're going to show up in that, uh, assuming you're from Houston, <laughs> using ourselves as an example. Uh, and then you also, once people join the, your meetup page, you can send mass emails out to, uh, to all your members to alert of event changes or follow up with prospective guests. Uh, it actually features a public member list. So you can see at all times how many people are involved in the meetup, which looks really good for you guys. So if you have 30 people that are in your meetup page, then any prospective guest is going to see it and go, oh, this is a really big chorus. This they have a lot of stuff going on. You know, I want to check it out. Uh, and then lastly, this is a pretty new feature to meet up. Uh, if you are ever having trouble finding uh, a place to, for rehearsals or for a show, uh, Meetup actually is partnering with a company called WeWork and allows you to book uh, spaces uh, in the community for special events. Uh, and so um, that could be an opportunity there for you if you're having trouble finding uh, a venue for what you're doing. So those are kind of the, the four major ones I think you should look into. Other options uh, would be like Snapchat, because that's a, definitely a powerful tool for uh, a younger community. We're actually about to launch a, a Snapchat page for SWD that, uh, at District. Uh, so you know, I recommend looking at Snapchat as well if you're trying to reach a younger audience. 
Uh, and then next up would be, I, I could even consider LinkedIn because you have, that's a, a network where a lot of people are living um, that are using it for more professional uses. But because of that, you're probably going to have a lot of people on LinkedIn um, and of all age groups, kind of anywhere from age, you know, around 20 to, to you know, to retirees. And so um, it's a great place to find uh, for, you know, prospective guests uh, for your chapter. I've actually created a, uh, a LinkedIn account for Space City. And who knows if it's if it's really helped so far, but I, I think in the long run it will. Um, but those are the four platforms and all, along with those two extra ones. Uh, Next up, I wanted to get to give you guys some samples of courses that are doing it right. Um, so here I've got um, two on Facebook and one on Instagram. To start off, we got Fog City Singers, a, a pretty new course out of the Bay Area uh, that basically uses a lot of video and graphics. They, they, they do have some guys in the course that are pretty talented and have a lot of resources. And so I understand that you might not have as many as they do, or, but you know, using them as an example to inspire you is not, never a bad thing. So, for example, here on the left, they have a video of uh, one of their songs from their most recent sh from a recent show called City Walk that they did. And so, immediately following their City Walk concerts, they took various little clips of their uh, songs and they turned them into video content that they could share. Um, they didn't do full songs, so they avoided copyright infringement. And um, it's just a great little sample. Um, you know, for, for their followers to see, to not only to see what they missed out on, but maybe give them a better reason to come back to a show next time. Um, and they also use a GoPro, which I highly recommend because that kind of adds a, a new perspective to content as opposed to like a standard like handy cam. Um, you know, I think GoPros look really cool. So just that's an idea. Getting, getting into that kind of uh, technology would be, would be a, a great idea. Uh, another chorus that you may not even have heard of, uh, Virginians Chorus. I follow them on Instagram. Uh, they're kind of they're an older chorus, and they're not even that well known. But weirdly enough, they're really good at social media. Um, so I, I often follow them to see what they're doing. One thing I love that they do is they actually offer, well, at least they describe it as uh, free voice lessons for six weeks for uh, potential new members or guests. And I don't know exactly what they do when the guests show up if they actually offer them private lessons or or whatnot. But they use this idea as a tool to get more members. And so they create these graphics, as you'll see at the bottom, um, under all their information uh, about, uh, about these free voice lessons and, and uh, you know, giving people more incentive to show up. And uh, I also think they're a great example of, of a course that fills out their bio uh, very clean and concisely. So they say they're Richmond's premier men's acapella vocal ensemble. They say that they're, they meet on Tuesdays, 7 p.m., and they have their address. And then they have their link to their website in the little link bar. That you can uh, that you can fill in there. So that's a great example of a course that uh, is kind of using Instagram uh, to the fullest, and you can tell that they're doing a good job by the fact that they're only following 85 people, but they're um, got, uh, they have over 150 followers, which for a small, not well-known course, that's a big deal. Uh, and then lastly, Central Standard. Uh, I use them as an example because uh, they recently put out a video for this. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but there's been this tag challenge that's been spreading all over Facebook lately, where quartets and choruses challenge each other. Uh, to sing a tag and record it and put it online, and so because it's a standard, is a well-known chorus who have you know they've won a, they've won um, you know medals, they they have accolades. I thought it would be a good example to show how a bigger chorus is still getting involved in social media, uh, and they used their uh, the notoriety, their audience to um, not only show uh, that they can be a part of the community of, of this tag challenge, but they actually tagged zero eight vocal effects and vocal standard three other uh, pretty well-known choruses uh, in the barbershop world. And so they're kind of opening the gates uh, to them and, you know, using their voice to uh, get the word out to other, to other big voices. And so because they tagged them, all the members of Zero Eight Vocal Effects and Vocal Standard, they're going to be notified uh, of this tag, you know, because whether, you know, either their, their social media managers will let them know that this happened and that they want them to get involved, or um, if they're following their page, they might get a notification. Um, and as you can see, you know, there's a ton of comments, close to 5,000 views on the video, 44 shares, 12, um, you know, 12 comments in all. In, in all. And so um, I think that, you know, uh, that fo following what they're doing um, with, you know, some kind of campaign like a tag challenge would be really great too. Uh, so if you ever have the opportunity to be tagged in one of these uh, challenges, definitely opt in and make a video and, um, you know, it kind of use the opportunity to your fullest. Uh, and so, you know, you might be wondering, you know, other than the platforms themselves, you know, what tools can I use to help make this whole thing easier for me? Because it might be kind of a new uh, venture for you guys and you might not know exactly where, you know, what you should do first. 
And so I'll just put a small list here. Um, for social media management, there's tools like Buffer, Hootsuite, Sprout Social, Social Pilot. They all have their own different um, uses and, and features. So I recommend just looking into them to learn more. But the general consensus is that they allow you to, uh, to manage your content uh, you know, before they're post posted and um, choose when to schedule them in advance. Uh, and so it makes it a lot easier because you can plan out your posts um, you know, uh, weeks if not months ahead. Uh, so if you know that district's coming up, you can plan to put a post out um, you know, three weeks before district and you can plan that out months ahead. Um, so those are some great options for you. Buffers, I think totally free. Hootsuite and Social Pilot have a few uh, free options. So just look into uh, to those if, if you're looking to kind of uh, have a little bit more uh, control over the content you're putting out. Uh, next up would be TweetDeck. It's a similar tool to those, uh, but it's specifically for Twitter. And on top of being able to publish your content through it, uh, what I love about it is that, for one thing, it's completely free, 100%. And um, you can actually create feeds of content to be followed so that you can be engaged with what's going on um, in the acapella world. So for Spacity Sound, I have like a ton of feeds that follow hashtags, that follow certain courses. That way I can always be clued in on when uh, a, you know, a, a post goes up and maybe we want to retweet it or uh, kind of reshare it to our networks. Um, so that's a great tool, highly recommend. Uh, and then uh, <clears throat> kind of, you know, these three tools are, are a little bit, um, I would say, maybe a little bit less priority, but I think they're, they're very relevant. Um, Space City Sound uses Slack to communicate between members. So uh, if you're looking for kind of a more powerful tool that's more organized and has a lot of different features, Slack's a great one. Uh, if you're looking for something a little bit more simpler, I recommend something like GroupMe. Uh, it just allows you to communicate with your, uh, with, with your members, you know, in, in a more concise uh, easier way throughout the week when you're in out of rehearsal. Uh, Unsplash is a, you probably haven't heard of it because it's, it's not that well known, but it's basically a, a, a website that a lot, that offers free uh, or copyright free uh, high quality photos, uh, you know, to the masses. And so if you're trying to create some content online and you're worried about copyright, you're worried about not having good uh, photos to use for, you know, for a, a flyer or a, very, you know, a graphic for whatever your needs are, uh, Unsplash is a great source um, for all kinds of photos that might be a good fit for you. And then uh, to kind of tie into what Johnny was saying about websites, uh, Google Analytics is also a great tool uh, to kind of uh, you know use with uh, your website to kind of track metrics, you know, uh, uh, clicks, uh, potential you know uh, ticket leads. Uh, you know, uh, like I said, look into these tools because there's a lot of information about it. Um, but uh, you know, I, I do think that it's important to uh, to to be as knowledgeable as you can about it, what, re what resources exist. And so, how can your course jump on this bandwagon uh, for social media? And so, to start, you know, spend time researching what other courses are doing. Um, that can be a huge benefit. Um, it's helped me a lot with, with what I've done uh, in BH, you know, in Bravo Shop uh, social media. Um, Learn how to best use social media through FAQs and video tutorials. That's why I didn't jump into kind of how these tools work. There's so much information. It's best to just go and discover it on your own. Uh, if you have any questions, obviously, you can always reach out to me. Um, but I recommend kind of doing the research yourself and, and, and taking the time to learn. Uh, designate a specific person to write social channels as opposed to multiple people. Uh, ownership is everything. This is huge. Um, I think this is honestly why a lot of uh, courses and even quartets don't necessarily do the best job they could is because they don't know to have one person or maybe at, at most a committee of people uh, taking taking ownership over social media. Uh, you know, there's no rhyme or reason. You know, people don't know when they should post or how often they should post. You know, you might post something and then accidentally another person in the course posts the same thing like the same day because there wasn't any communication about who was posting what. Um, so. I highly recommend, um, if you haven't picked someone yet to run social media specifically, uh, do that. It just makes the whole process way easier. Uh, and then as a, a kind of a tip for you, if no one is stepping up to do this, uh, consider partnering with a local high school or university and find a student who is willing to be a social media intern through you. Uh, I've actually seen a number of courses do this over the years. Uh, you'd be surprised how many students would be interested in, in having that kind of opportunity. I know that I would have you know, when I was in school. Uh, and we have a, we're lucky we're in Texas. There is a ton of, uh, of like really great uh, music focused uh, universities here that would probably have quite a few uh, students that would be looking for an internship uh, that might be a good fit for them. So uh, if you don't have someone that can run it for you internally, uh, I definitely recommend going this route. Uh, it would be a, a huge help to you guys. 
And, uh, and that's it. Uh, I know that we have a, a Q&A section specifically for everybody, but if you have any specific ones that you want to take offline, feel free to reach out to me on my social networks or uh, uh, in my, to my, via my Gmail or even uh, give me a phone call, and I'm happy to walk you through any, uh, any, uh, any answers to questions that you might have. So, Don, we, we have had a few questions that have queued up, and, and for everyone else who's listening in uh, and watching, if you have a question specifically, um, look at the, uh, the group chat function that you'll see down on the, uh, on the bottom of your screen and just uh, enter your question to the chat. But there have been a few questions that have come in primarily uh, on the social media section, so these will be mostly directed at you, Don. But the sure. biggest one, the one that's the most, most popular question has been specifically, this has been kind of a really good overview and a really good starting point. Um, but the question is, um, are there any plans in the future to be any, to do any more specific training on the specific uh, individual social media platforms? In other words, would it be possible at some point to do an hour on Facebook, to do an hour on Twitter, sure. to do an hour on Media? Yeah, great question. I, the answer is, I would love to do that. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, you know, we're all we're all busy. We all have we all have jobs, you know, outside of our our, our hobby. Uh, so we definitely would need to plan it out. Uh, but. I would be happy to host uh, future webinars on specific platforms or maybe even just one on the tools you can use with those platforms. Um, you know, I think this would probably be something that we plan out uh, on, the, on the marketing team, but it sounds like there might be a, a need or interest in having that. So um, I, I say yes, fingers crossed, but we'd have to plan it out. <laughs> so we will, uh, for, for those listening in, Dominic and I will work together with, uh, with Rocky. We'll see if we can't get some of those set up in the next few months where we can uh, without taking too much of his time, but at the same time, still try to set it up so we can do a little bit more of a of a deep dive into each of the individual platforms because there are some some, some very distinct differences between them, sure. and there are distinct differences in how um, posting should be approached, and and we'll certainly get into that a little bit more when we have those sessions. Um, Don, let's talk for 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 a second about well. Well, let me ask this: um, if you, you you showed social media platforms of of Facebook, Twitter, link. Or, um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Meetup specifically were the four that you mentioned. Now you touched on Snapchat, you touched on LinkedIn, and we did have a question about those as well, so I'm glad that you touched on them. But out of those four, how would you rank them as far as if somebody was starting, a course was starting from scratch? Sure. Where would you start and where would you go from there? Hmm. That's interesting. I, so I, I do think that the goals of the course probably impact what platform you would want to start with because – uh, for instance, if you want to be a really competitive chorus and, you know, and, and you want to have really active guys, you know, the best singers possible, potentially go to international, you know, it would probably be better, or not better, but, but best to try to find platforms where <clears throat> you're having a healthy mix of both people on the older side and people on the younger side, uh, because it, it tends to be, uh, uh, there, from my experience, there tends to be a, a difference in uh, in kind of the, uh, the, the the individual goals of, of uh, members and also the potential uh, quality of the overall sound if you have a, a mix of, you know, of younger voices and older voices. And so, uh, if you're going for that competitive edge, uh, I think that uh, you know going for maybe one of the more younger platforms is the right choice. So something like Instagram, uh, probably or Twitter. Uh, I would say that there probably isn't. Any uh, reason why a meetup page would be a bad idea for any chorus, um, you know, that's kind of a, it is considered social media, but it's a little bit more uh, specific. It has a little bit more, I think it has a little bit more specific uh, uses. So um, I would say, you know, maybe start with meetup, but at the same time, run one of those other channels. So maybe create a meetup page and then choose to go with Facebook or choose to go with Instagram. I think it is a big ask to try to do all three at once. Um, so I understand why you'd want to start with one. Um, Spacey Sound kind of did that. We started with Facebook and we started adopting other ones very slowly. I think that was probably the right choice. Um, but from my experience, Facebook is becoming a platform mainly more more so for older folks. So if you want to stay in the uh, in kind of the the latest and greatest uh, you know of, of what's happening on social media, probably picking Twitter or uh, Instagram or even Snapchat uh, to start would be a good idea. Um, but partnering that with at the same time with Meetup, I think would be a, a good idea. So, are there any introductory costs or any costs of using any of these? I mean, I know that for for the basic Facebook, for the basic Twitter, those are all free. But I believe there's a cost to to setting up a Meetup uh, page and sure. such. Sure. Um, no, I mean in general, there, most of these sites start off as free, and 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 the paid services don't aren't necessarily a requirement for you to get into. So, I'll tell you right now. 
uh, you can totally capitalize on Instagram and Twitter without spending any money. Like you don't have to spend money for those. I, um, they have ad platforms within those ones, but I honestly think there's a lot of good work that can be done without ads on uh, Twitter and Instagram. Facebook's a tough one. I think it depends on what you want to get out of it. Um, I think Facebook is uh, great to use simply to have your, your name out there on the platform and to use as a makeshift website. But if you're looking for a lot of engagement, uh, you know, a, a lot of impact on social media, uh, on Facebook, uh, there's going to be some certain things you want to look into. For instance, videos are huge on Facebook. You know, if you can, if the more videos you put out, the more engagement you get, the more notoriety you're going to have because that's just where you're going to see the most uh, responses. Uh, and at the same, at the same time, Facebook, unfortunately, uh, on the back end, uses a lot of um, of like formulas and uh, and kind of like uh, um, get, I don't know how to say it. It basically Facebook has, has set up in a way where, uh, unfortunately, you can't get a lot of notoriety visually unless you're spending ad budget. Um, and so I, I think it's better to go into Facebook uh, from the perspective of it's a makeshift website. You know, it's good to be on there because a lot of people are on there. And, you know, it will allow us to share our video clips, you know, and photos. But don't expect to have a huge turnover of guests necessarily from Facebook. I personally don't think you're going to have a whole lot uh, because usually to get that kind of response, you need to spend ad budget on, uh, on Facebook. Um, but the bright side is you don't need to spend a lot of money. I mean, I think the minimum for ads on Facebook is like, it's like $5, <laughs> you know, and you can like do it over the course of a day or maybe a couple days. Um, just test it out. And so um, you could potentially uh, use ads uh, you know, pretty effectively without spending much money at all uh, if you wanted to do that. And so um, you know, that's why Space City has tried to at least take a small portion of our yearly budget uh, and push that towards ads because uh, it, 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 with, the, with the right planning, it can fit in. Um, does that kind of answer your question? Yeah, that kind of answers that question. Let me talk <laughs> just, just for a second about Meetup. Uh, sure. Say that you know, my course has been using Meetup for almost five years now, and we're at a stage where we're actually paying, I think, an average of twelve dollars a month for Meetup, but it's bringing us one to two visitors per month uh, from our Meetup page. Right. We've had really good success with it since we launched it, um, but one thing that we found is that I think our limit is in fifty members uh, on our page on our Meetup page. So I have to call those fairly regularly. We'll have a lot of people who will come and join, maybe come to one rehearsal or a couple of rehearsals and then may not come back. Uh, I see. And if they're not continuing to come or we'll keep in touch with them through Meetup, but if after a few months they're not coming back or not really showing any interest, then there's not really a reason to keep them in there. We go in and call that to keep it under that 50 limit because once we would have get to 51 members, then our costs would go up higher. So I think we gotcha. pay 72 bucks every six months uh, on it, but it's uh, averaging out $12 a month for one to two visitors a month just from that platform and then finding it uh, that platform or finding us through that platform directly, I think has been worth the money for my, for my chorus. So cool. Uh, well, I, I could hear use the other three. Um, and I know that we don't spend much uh, on any of them except for doing some advertising as Don mentioned, but with meetup, I do want to mention that there is a, and, you know, if you yeah. want to get over just the very, very smallest, you know, so I get something, um, and, and truth be told, we try to keep a lot of our members, our active members, uh, a number of them in meetup, because when somebody comes to a group and they see three people in the group, they're going to be less likely to want to come to something than if they see 42 people in the group, right? So we kind of have to keep that balance and keep it close to 50, but under 50, so that we don't spend more than, more than the, 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 uh, the, the $12 a month on average. Okay, moving on to um, another question here, and this is kind of, of a more general question as it relates to social media, but a lot of times I'll see um, groups or people that'll just only post things about what their group is doing. They won't really join the conversation. Is that a good idea? Uh, what's the best <laughs> approach one should take to posting on social media? You know, so, okay, so let me, <laughs> that's a really good question. I, it's funny because I think about that. Well, it come, it, it's for me, it's, so, it's, it's like a, I don't think to think about it anymore. It, it's so like, it, it, it's, it's like ingrained in me. So I don't think about it anymore, but that is a good a question to ask. Uh, what I'll say is if, if you're going to do anything, the bare minimum, definitely post what your course is doing. So that's not, I don't want to make it seem like that's a bad thing. That's, that is a good thing. But if you can be more active in the conversation, as you're saying, and do more than that, I highly recommend it. 
And there's a number of reasons why. One, uh, it's just better from a content perspective to not have every post be about like, here's what we're doing, or buy our tickets, or you know, it, it, it comes off less salesy, which I think is really good to be genuine and to, to, to seem like you're a part of the barbershop community and not just me, me, me. Um, but also, I, I think it's also good because the, the more you get involved in your community, the more the community will get involved with you. The more you'll, you'll see get, you'll, you'll, the, the people giving back. So for instance, um, if, if, we, if Space City Sound posts a, uh, a photo or a video or an event page and we tag SWD in it for, for whatever the reason, we find an organic way to wrap in SWD and we tag them, SWD then could potentially share that content on their platform and now they've doubled the audience from Spaces audience and you've also now used um, SWD's audience. Or I know in the past that Space City has shared content of Marchman's, you know, because, you know, we love you guys and, 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 we, and we, want, we want both chapters to, to, to grow and, and flourish because, you know, we represent uh, Barbershop community. You know, we represent Barbershop in, in two large Texas communities. And so if we share a video of you guys and uh, support, you know, I think that not only is good just from a uh, relationship perspective between both courses, but then that might also inspire you guys to share something of ours. You know, and it's just a great relationship to have because, you know, at the end of the day, even though we have contests, we're not competitors. You know, we're all, we're all brothers in harmony here. You know, we're all, we're all, we're all part of the same hobby. And so, um, you know, I think it only helps your organization if you can be a part of that conversation and, um, and, and, you know, and not be afraid to share something a little bit more general. You know, uh, a little more outside of the, the me, 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 <laughs> so to speak. If I can yeah. piggyback uh, a little bit on, on what Dom is saying there, you know, one of, one of the points in my presentation was that uh, we should be getting together more as a, as a community, you know, the, the different chapters and everything. And if we all kind of know what each other is doing, you know, we can support each other and we can draw ideas from each other. And uh, this, is, this is a good way to do that. And, and uh, it, it's not just, Facebook and any of this social media is not just a place to go and sell tickets, but it's also a place to, to feature your chorus. I mean, uh, I've posted a few things uh, from the VM on uh, personal things that people have accomplished. And, and, and that's good too. We want to feature articles about, that's one of the things I mentioned, the feature articles about your people there. So mm -hmm. Facebook and some of these other places are, are a good way to do that. Now, I might be going a little bit of a tangent there, but uh, mm -hmm. The social media is another way to uh, uh, bring our community uh, into a more communicative loop. Yes, you can write that down, communicative. So uh, we all uh, shouldn't feel isolated from each other. And, and I guess I learned that from the Air Force. It's that uh, every base in the command that I was in, we all had the contact numbers of uh, all the other public affairs officers and if somebody had a problem or somebody had a good suggestion You know, you just call them up and say hey, how did you do this? And I'd love to see that start happening around our district Yeah, you know getting back to social media there's and I hate to use the cliche But it's called social media for a reason and that's the whole point behind it is to be sociable um, I, One of the pioneers of social media um, is a guy named Guy Kawasaki and one of the things that he's famous for saying is that when you are on social media, you sp should spend 80% of your time or 80% of your posts should be social. They should be community related and only 20% should be about yourself. Yeah. So it's, it's really good getting back to what Don was talking about, uh, about finding things that are of interest, would be of interest to your audience and, uh, and passing those out to your audience, knowing that they'll probably do the same thing. So it's just kind of a good rule of thumb to follow that 80, 20 rule. Yeah. Um, Dom, getting back just to, you, you mentioned Buffer and Hootsuite and Sprout Social and Social Pilot. Are any of those, you know, they're all tools and I know they all have free options. Are there any that you would say, you know, for a chorus or for a nonprofit like we all are, is there one that you would say, I think that this is probably the best one to start with or going to be the most versatile or maybe the easiest for someone who's really not adept at using social media to be able to jump in and get a handle on first? Yeah, no, uh, I think that's a great point. There's a reason why I mentioned Buffer first uh, in that list. Uh, I definitely would say Buffer is, is, a, is a great one because it'll uh, basically, uh, digging a little bit more deeper into it, it not only allows you to schedule content that you've uh, created in advance and, and you know, for certain dates and times, 
but uh, you can also set it up where it actually automates certain content. So it might actually, you might be able to set it up and actually have it pull, you know, just basic content around acapella or barbershop that might show up in your, that might show up in, um, online and they can actually set it up where it automatically grabs something and posts it without you having to even do anything. Um, and so if you're having trouble um, doing the social thing that we're talking about and, you know, making it a little bit less about your course and more about the community, uh, Buffer has some features that would allow you to, to, to do that in an easier way. Uh, and from what I remember, uh, I might be wrong, but I, I think uh, in general, Buffer is totally free. Uh, there might be a paid for version, but in general, it, um, it's, it's most of the features are, um, are totally free, unlike some of the other platforms I mentioned. Uh, and it is pretty easy to use from my experience. Uh, and then I would also say at the same time, if you're going to dive into Twitter, um, definitely jump on TweetDeck um, immediately. Um, it seems like a lot when you look at TweetDeck as a whole because it's got like, you can set up it has tons of feeds of content. But um, if uh, every, each feed works the same way. So um, I like to think of it a little bit like if, if any of you have any, uh, this is maybe not the best example, but if, you, if any of you have any um, like, um, sound engineering background, if, if you've done any live sound stuff, there's a lot of knobs on that thing, but each track is does, it does the same thing. And so as long as you understand one track on the soundboard, you understand the rest of the board. And so tweet decks the same way. If you understand one feed, you understand the rest of them. And so you might set it up to follow hashtag everyone in harmony, or you might follow uh, you know, the SWD's next up, Twitter account, you know, for district, and you'll you'll follow either specific handles or um, or searches or hashtags, um, and you think there's there's a limit to how many feeds you can have, but there's a, you can have a lot. It's something like it's like ten or something like that. And anytime somebody posts a tweet in one of those categories, it'll show up in your feed, and you can click like or retweet every time. And so it's kind of it's basically an endless bank of content that can tune you into what's happening with barbershop. Um, you know, that makes running a Twitter account a lot easier. So I, I would say those two are, are a great place to start is Buffer for general uh, social media management and then TweetDeck to kind of capitalize on Twitter uh, to the best of your ability. Would you say that the two primary benefits of these tools uh, would be one, to be able to monitor um, other, other organizations or other feeds that you are, um, to, to see what they're posting, and then secondarily, sure. The other benefit would be to um, uh, not have to post live, but to be able to schedule posts to go out at a designated time so that yeah. you can just sit down and do like a week's worth of posts in an hour mm -hmm. and then just schedule them when you want those to drip. Are those, yeah. you say that those would be the two primary benefits of those tools? Absolutely. I mean, next to being able, next to just kind of brand awareness and potentially finding more leads for, 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 you know, for ticket sales and for, and for new members. Other than that, I would say yes, those are the prime uses. Um, and you know, uh, kind of as an example of, of a, a situation where it would be a hugely helpful, imagine you have a show coming up and you are planning to do multiple posts to, to uh, advertise the show over the course of a month. And uh, as opposed to having to put down either in your notes or in your calendar, post on these individual days every time and rewrite the post every time with uh, something like um, Hootsuite, you could actually schedule the same post with the same copy 10 times if you wanted to over the course of a month. And every time it would go out when you say it does with the copy that you want and with the link or photo you want. And you wouldn't need to worry about it again. You do it all in advance. And so it saves you a lot of time. Um, that's why I use stuff like Hootsuite or Spot Social in my, in my business because I, I, I'm a, a full time digital marketer. And it makes my life really easy because as opposed to having to write the same tweet. 30 times, I can just schedule it, you know, and, it, and the tool allows me to do, to choose a multitude of dates and only write the tweet one time. Yeah, we do that with uh, Constant Contact when we send out our stuff. Yeah, that's another great uh, software that can do too. Actually, I, I totally forgot about it, but yeah, Constant Contact's great for, for email specifically, uh, e email, like email leads and newsletters, that kind of stuff, so. Um, yeah, at some point, Rocky, we probably are gonna wanna set up a session to talk just about something like Constant Contact or MailChimp and in, in email marketing, because that's something that we went an hour and we didn't even touch on here. Uh, or right. touched on. Um, we're getting a lot of questions about when we're going to be having our next sessions. Rocky, I know that you've got something planned for district, right? Yes, indeed. We have, uh, there's actually two marketing sessions uh, that are in-person, face-to-face cl -face classes that'll be at the, the convention coming up. One of these is put on by uh, Randy... Randy, oh, is it Randy Meyer? Nod your head if I'm correct. 
Okay. Randy Meyer, and he's a contest administrator for the, uh, for the contest coming up. He'll be presenting uh, at like three o'clock on uh, Friday afternoon. And then just an hour, an hour and a half or so after that, we will put on another presentation, which uh, we're going to take kind of the same con uh, content that we had here, but uh, we'll tailor it to what these questions were. And yeah. looks like looks like we're getting a lot of questions about social media. So you know, Don, <laughs> awesome. like you might be in the spotlight here, huh? That, that's that's fine. Um, I was thinking that um, considering we have so many questions, and because I assume a lot of the same people might show up for the in-person one at district, um, yeah. I can try to create a new presentation that is a little bit more focused, maybe in one of these areas. Um, I, I think I could probably get the time. So, yeah, I think um, it's what people want to see. They 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 kind of like bullet points, you know, so that they can sure. take notes and that sort of thing. Sure. Yeah. yeah so, no. Um, I think that we're getting. Just based upon the questions that I'm getting on the background here, a lot of people are saying, I'd love to have an hour where we can take a deep dive into Facebook. How do I set it up? How do oh, I, I think we need more than an hour. <laughs> well, but you know what I'm saying, at least to, yeah. take, to get there. No, I, I, I bet you I could find a way to be concise enough to do it in an hour. But yeah, that's a great idea. We could do a, we could do a full Facebook session. Yeah. You know, this as is a great. This is very encouraging. This is why I wanted to do this webinar in the first place to find out you know, uh, where people's questions are and what we can do to help them be more effective communicating to everybody, not just uh, uh, their, their chorus, but uh, everybody in the district and, and people outside that. This is great. And not cool. meaning to volunteer, Johnny, but I think, and I haven't got a lot of questions on it, but I do think that it would probably be worth taking a deep dive into maybe some of the, the, uh, the uh, creation platforms for like Squarespace and WordPress, um, you know, just as far as and, and, and Groupanizer, for that matter of fact, I know a lot of courses utilize Groupanizer. I know we utilize Groupanizer, but we don't use it for our website. So, um, you know, I think it would be a good idea for us to set up a seminar, too, where we or a webinar where we go through and just kind of touch on some of the highlights of those and maybe take a little bit deeper dive into each of the individual platforms. So um, we, we, should, we should talk about that offline, guys, but maybe over the next few months we could try to schedule two or three online in addition to what you already have planned at uh, Absolutely. Cool. Okay, with that, I, I don't see any additional questions. Uh, the one question that was just asked, will the convention classes be streamed, Rocky? I don't think those will be, will they? No, I'm afraid not. Yeah, uh, no. we didn't have yeah. to do that, but I, yeah. you know, this is a... Well, okay, now wait a second. You that got something said, to say there? That, that being said, we could. I just wanted to say that out. We could easily stream the classes, and, it, and technically, there, it would it would not be a bad idea because there's no legal issues as to why we can't because there's no like singing happening there's no music being shared so well, if, if there's an interest in that we could literally set up a FB live okay let's talk about that because there's some other things to consider <laughs> but okay. I'd like to if we if we can we'll announce it okay okay good well, idea. I, I think that it might be a, a, a better way to handle that might be for us to take similar content or maybe tailor some content and do more of these webinars yeah uh, we sure. Can, do one of these a month for a little while until we covered the majority of the material. Um, it, okay. It's a very easy thing to set up. We can do just what we did here where we blast it out to the district and then have as many people come in and view it. And uh, then we can also re record it on YouTube for posterity for those who either want to go back and see what did I miss or you know, I wasn't available to join live. So that's something that we can certainly set up. Um, so let's, uh, you know, with that, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. We'll get this posted onto YouTube later today. And then uh, hopefully we'll see everyone uh, at district within a couple weeks and then be looking for in the future more of these uh, uh, webinars on, uh, on, on website and social media and, and uh, marketing in general. Thanks, everybody, for attending. And um, thank you. We'll, uh, we'll see you all thank soon. You. Have a great day, Thanks. everybody.